Welcome to Game Changers Silicon Valley, a show about today's emerging innovations that may be the game changers of tomorrow. Tonight's show is about a personal journey, how a highly qualified, esteemed, and successful surgeon decided to launch a program for the underserved that may turn out to be a major player in providing access to medical services. My name is Jim Conner. My guest is Homero Rivas, the Director of Innovative Surgery at the Stanford School of Medicine. Homero, welcome to the show. At the Stanford School of Medicine, one of your primary activities is to provide surgical procedures to people who have a life-threatening weight problem, generally using the gastric bypass technique. Can you give us an overview of the number of people seeking this procedure, and how do people come to the decision to do this? Very good. Uh, thank you, Jim. It's a great honor to be here. Um, obesity is a major epidemic. It's actually the first worldwide non-infectious epidemic. Uh, so, big problem. Uh, here in the U.S., just to give you an example, we have uh, probably 70% of people are overweight. About 30% of people are obese. And about 18 million people qualify to have what we call weight loss surgery or bariatric surgery. Um, we know that people can try a number of things. Uh, it's very unfortunate, however, that most of those things don't really work. And those would include diet, exercise, medication. You could put acupuncture, hypnosis, magic, pretty much anything. Nothing really works. Uh, the only thing that works efficiently, effectively, successfully is to do an operation. And, you know, that's what, uh, that's what I do. Uh, at Stanford, we have a uh, fantastic group of people. It's a center of excellence that's led by uh, Dr. John Morton, uh, who's actually the, uh, the president of the American Society of Bariatric and Metabolic Surgery. And uh, going back to what you said, uh, actually only less than 1% of all those 18 million people actually get to have bariatric surgery every day, uh, every year. There are a number of... Um, uh, how would I say, constraints in the system, let's put mm -hmm. it that way. Uh, the main one, the demand exceeds the uh, resources that we have. And for someone like, like me who does uh, uh, weight loss surgery pretty much every day, uh, it takes at least probably 14, 15 years of training before I, c I can actually do that. So we are attacking a, a well-established problem that, uh, in all honesty, is going to be difficult to just treat it just by a group of us. Uh, we need to attend to prevention more than anything. Let me ask you a little bit about this. Now, it's the, the uh, 18 million or so people who are mm -hmm. this really severe problem. Is that a certain weight? Is that like 300 plus pounds or something like that? That's a good question. Well, everyone's going to be different, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, a good way more or less for people to understand this is someone who has maybe an excess weight of 100 pounds. Excess. Uh, but you, what we actually do is a very simple equation where you can actually get what we call a body mass index. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, your, your weight uh, divided in your height uh, to the square. And that's, uh, so you can get a, a, a pretty much a number. Mm -hmm. Usually a number that is normal for most people would be, or ideal, let's put it that way, is anywhere from 20 to 25. And that's only less than, you know, 30% uh, of people would actually have that here in the, in the U.S. Most people are going to be in the range of 25 to and above, which is going to be the overweight or obese, uh, and that's what we actually, uh, the, the people that we actually try to help them. Mm -hmm. so I've wondered about people I've seen who were very large. Was it, so, was it something in their metabolic system? Was it something in, uh, that didn't digest correctly? Or is it just the fact that their body got out of control, meaning they were eating far too much and not exercising enough? But is an age related in terms of their ability to address this before it gets beyond the point of no Very return? Good. That's an excellent observation. I mean, the cycle of life, uh, mm -hmm. we um, are programming a way to survive. Uh, we believe, at least subconsciously, that the more weight we keep, uh, the, the more we're going to be able to survive for that matter. As we age, we become less active. We keep eating as much uh, or maybe a bit more because we tend to do better. Uh, and so we gain some weight. Uh, for the most part, as you age, you're going to be uh, bigger, fatter, uh, just uh, with an, an unhealthy weight that's going to be uh, not good for you. Uh, there's going to be certainly, uh, that's the most common thing, that people eat more and they work less. 
Uh, however, there's some other pro problems, like for example, having a slow metabolism that is going to make you more prone to have or gain some weight, and other medical problems that we always look uh, and and make sure that patients don't have before we actually do something correctable with it, like an mm -hmm. operation. Mm -hmm. So now you specialize in this gastro, gastro, gastric bypass. That's one of the uh, few operations that say that I do. Okay. That's right. One of the few. Okay. One of the few. Okay. And is this, shall I say, highly successful? That's a good question. It's highly successful. If you put in perspective all the different therapies uh, for uh, obesity, which in general they represent approximately a hundred and so uh, billion dollar market in Eight, North America. Eight hundred billion. Billion dollar market in North America. Okay. okay. Um, the bariatric surgery or weight loss surgery is pretty much the only successful therapy that we have. That includes in the U.S. for the most part the use of gastric bypass, which is an operation that we've been uh, doing for the last 50 years, more or less. V highly successful, very predictable results, and patients have usually 70 to 80 percent, 70 to 80 percent of the excess weight they have. So if they have 100 pounds extra, they're going to lose about 70 to 80 pounds of that in the first six months to a year. Mm -hmm. There are other operations that are not as old, let's put it that way, but they're also highly successful. The so-called gastric sleeve, where you remove a big portion of the stomach, you make the stomach look just like a sleeve, so very narrow, very thin. People have a few bites, they feel satisfied, they stop eating. And there were some others that people have tried, like doing a, what they call like lap band or putting some you know, balloons. And there's so many other therapies that have come and gone with uh, some limited uh, results. Mm -hmm. uh, are there psychological factors on the people who undertake this or under, under, uh, go in this way? No question. As a matter of fact, it's very interesting. It is difficult once you have a problem of being obese. Uh, the, the way how you can cope with things can be very challenging. So we have to uh, incorporate a multidisciplinary approach to actually be successful. No operation is going to be like a magical solution for this, and you have to incorporate a team of uh, psychologists, a team of psychiatrists if needed, mm -hmm. and also dietitians among other people. I see. Kind of a behavior change. No question. That's, That's right. That's interesting. Fascinating. Now. What makes you extremely interesting is you are highly successful, held in high, high, high esteem. Everybody knows about your, your, uh, what you're doing at Stanford. And now you one day woke up and said, I want to do something beyond this. <laughs> now, now, I mean, you have full employment. You mentioned earlier there's only 2,000 people in the U.S. who can do this. There's 18 million people waiting and you can only do six a day. And you are absolutely booked through the rest of your life as long as you want to work with a great income and lots of status. In, what, what more could you ask for? But <laughs> now you had this awakening, it sounds like, That's that right. you wanted to go and do something else. You're not abandoning this highly successful, but you're doing something else. Let's talk about that for a moment. Well, what I have said before, it is it, the way I see medicine, and I've been in medicine for you know the last 30 some years. My, my dad, he's a surgeon, so since, since I was a kid, I used to do house call with him, being in the operating room with him. So this is very dear to me. Having said that, uh, we have a very poor business model, I think, physicians in general, uh, in the sense that we work in, uh, in an artisanal of way. We really cannot scale our production. So I have to be in the operating room all day, I have to be in clinic all day, and the social impact that I'm going to have is going to be very limited. Maybe five people in the operating room, maybe 10 people, maybe 100 people in clinic, but it's very limited. So what I think is by leveraging on information and communication technologies, we can get to the masses using technology. And so I think, you know, being here in the U.S., coming from Mexico, um, I see every day how there's like, you know, we have a, a large, large group with very uh, poor access to care because of the limited number of physicians we have in the U.S. Uh, who speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have felt very compelled in creating a telemedicine company, for that matter, where I can bring access to, to people, no matter where they are, as long as they are connected, and most people are, mm -hmm. uh, access to a care provider who can understand them and who can help them with their medical needs. Mm -hmm. So I, I went to your website, and it looks like for $40, you're providing a online, real-time, 
a communication link with an, with an appropriate physician That's right. or a team that can sort this yes. out and give you a prescription. That's right. So it's something very simple. It's not the only telemedicine company that out, that it's out there. However, we believe that we're very disruptive in a way because everything's in Spanish. Everything is not only with the alignment of your language, but truly culturally aligned. And we have a way how we can connect people immediately with uh, navigators mm -hmm. who are actually uh, maybe located outside you know, uh, the US, maybe here. But the end point with this is that we will be able to understand their needs and then connect them with a care provider here in the US who can actually give a prescription for that little payment. Mm -hmm. uh, this we have implemented in a number of uh, consulates of Mexico here in the US with very, very good results after doing you know, some hundred, uh, hundreds of patients uh, because they're so happy from, from this uh, availability of see me, seeing someone uh, in the language. Mm -hmm. What are the ranges uh, what is the range of um, issues that you can treat? There are yes. obviously some you can't. That is right. Uh, usually uh, simple things like having uh, types of like sore throat, which is like uh, could be a throat infection, ear infection, urinary tract infection, some belly pain, some headaches, some questions about health, some questions about the medications you already take, some things about that you need a refill for medication. Mm -hmm. uh, simple, very simple things simple. like that. Yeah. That's tremendous. Uh, uh, you've got two co-founders on, on your website. That is right, yes. Both of them, they have worked with me. We, we started from, from the very uh, beginning, and one of those is Eric LaRue. He's an emergency uh, room physician from Stanford. And the other one is Oved Esparza, who is not only a nurse, but he's also a, a PA, physician assistant. Uh, so both uh, tremendous assets and founders of the program. And is it based here in the Bay Area? Based in the Bay Area. But That's you right. can expand it to anywhere. It can be any center. That is correct. First, only in California, and then we're expanding throughout the southwest of the U.S., which makes more sense for the Hispanic community, sure. of course. That is great. That is wonderful. Fantastic. Well, we're going to put up uh, a, co a copy of your web page so people will know how to reach it at uh, www.doctalk and uh, your contact information there. And I want to wish you every success. It's a very uh, admirable, and I enjoy the story Excellent. of a guy who has no reason to go outside his specialty who says, I'm going to go outside that area where I'm comfortable and do something I believe is for the good of the society. So congratulations to Thank you. Thank you. I'll visit you in a few years, and you're going to see great success. I believe I will, <laughs> and I, I look forward to that. So thank you very much, Homero. Thank you, Jim. Uh, we'll talk soon, and uh, keep in touch with you. You bet. Thank you. I'd like to thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Game Changers Silicon Valley. Each week, we'll address an area of innovation that may emerge as a game changer of tomorrow. You can follow us on our Facebook account, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. We look forward to your continued interest and participation in upcoming shows.